This is the entrance to the Lama Temple. These walls gave the prince his privacy. This entrance alone would have been a lovely place to stroll in the evening. And these are the recycling bins, go figure. This is the layout of the digs. This is the bell tower. It was built in 1744. Actually has a bell up inside of it that was rung at the time of ceremonies. But here to the right is an apparently an authentic old Bell. These are very pretty looking and inscribed, uh, which must have been interesting. I don't know whether it was cast as inscribed or whether it was done afterward, but a lot of detail, what it means, what it says, who knows. But remember, they're talking to the gods, not to you and me. Here, the mounted striker. This is the East Hall, built the same time, 1744. And I don't know whether this, what I think is an octagonal base, is synonymous with square, i.e. Uh, reflective of earth. And the round portion at the top is reflective of the symbol of heaven. Anything round. I wonder if that design we can almost make out the structural feature is the basis for the cantilevering, although this is not much cantilevered at all, so it could structurally cantilever itself, I think. In fact, there's a considerable amount of weight, I suspect, sitting at the top of that post. The colorations of these, when they're restored like this, are good because then we can appreciate better the temple I was in earlier where it's not restored and everything's faded out. It's interesting, the symbol of the two dragons right over the uh, entranceway, since the dragons are a representation of the emperor. This cement stele inside uh, is written in Manchu and Chinese, uh, describing the reason for the changeover from Prince Yong's uh, residence to this lamasari. I suspect that this would have been some, no, no, it looks like it's part of the stele, some kind of bit, turtle base. The turtle is one of four of their symbolic animals. The smell of uh, incense is always lovely. I now, when I'm home, burn one or two sticks in every single morning when I'm working on my computer. Um, and all around the Lama Suri, at least the, uh, street uh, on which the entrance is are little shops selling these bundles of incense and people light them and hold them in front of their head and, and bow down and wave them down uh, in their supplication in getting or giving merit and then they deposit them in those uh, metal bins. So apparently this uh, large drum which was primarily for putting water as a fire reservoir becomes a place where you dump your money for getting merit from Buddha. This is the drum tower built at the same time. I'm thinking it's exactly the same design as the uh, uh, temple we saw and also the uh, bell tower.
There's a drum inside this one apparently. This is the West Temple. It seems to be exactly the same as the others. It has a stele in it describing exactly the same thing that the East Temple does. And you wonder if this isn't just something built as a matter of form and certainly by those who have the money as the prince must have to afford this quadruple level of redundancy. And here are the pair of lions, the female on this side with her cub. It's a beautiful base piece. Looks like it's made out of two chunks of either cement carved or stone that's been carved. Papasan there. This first gate is the Yonghe Gate. This is interesting because of the three entrances. It almost looks like Mama Bear on the left, Papa Bear in the center, and uh, Teenage Bear on the right, and Baby Bear on the far, far right. The four Buddha statues represent four different Buddhas. There are many different uh, forms of Buddha. This one appears to be a warlike or defensive one. Perhaps this one a more musical and artistic. What I don't see here that's interesting that I could never figure out or get a clear answer in Thailand. Here a central hall of some sort. And this, of course, is probably the prince's residence here. symbolizing the days of the week plus one extra one. No, that's not one extra. This is the largest, I think the oldest, uh, Tibetan lamasari in China. It all gets to be a bit redundant, of course. A pretty green tile, kind of. I've seen enough Buddhist temples to last a long, long time, but what you, I'm trying to do in here is imagine what the prince's life was like, or could have been like, in these environs that were not in temple format. It would be, I think, a certain quietude. Whether it was all stone flooring or whether it was more comfortable in my opinion or not, I don't know. Maybe this is a study seminary here. Murals probably of the Ramayana just like in Thailand, etc. Et this is probably a pulpit chair from which one of the monks would be lecturing or teaching to uh, whoever shows up as students. We get a little sense in this building of how it would have looked and how it feels or would have felt to have these uh, wall panels opened up, 
there's a breeze coming through, a lovely light. It's a magnificent kind of an altar piece, except I don't think it's an altar. Probably depicts heaven or a Buddhist version of heaven. Little sculptures on a mountainside, which is an oversimplification. <laughs> In the middle there on that one floor, probably that is filled with a bazillion little Buddhas. The more Buddhas, the better, literally. I'm guessing that this building, if it was here at the time of the prince in residence, uh, that perhaps it was just where there were support facilities like food preparation, uh, lodging for the coterie of attendants. It's interesting that here there are bells. I haven't seen bells before in China yet, but you see them in all of the uh, shrines and temples in Thailand. <laughs> 